So my blood runs Small Nation Red. We bring the life back to small towns. We give hope to the communities when they thought that there was no hope. We breathe fresh air and sunshine into buildings that were dying or dead. My name is Shannon Reese. Since the day that I started with Small Nation back 100 years ago, um, I fell in love with this building. It was a gem of the downtown. It was um, like an anchor building that just captured um, the sight, the, the, the first look of what you saw when you were coming downtown from any direction. So, uh, the, this building and this project from the get-go was, was something that I wanted that nobody else thought that it could have. And this building was um, untouchable. So really, when I say untouchable, it was that one, you know, the owner wouldn't let up on it. He had no interest in selling for several years. But then two, you know, nobody, Nobody wanted to touch it. Nobody wanted to deal with all of the negative. Nobody wanted to deal with all of the bad. Nobody wanted to have to deal with all of, you know, the unpleasant things of this building. So it was untouchable. So when we acquired the building, um, and even before then, when we went into contract with this building, um, it was under condemned status. So the second and third floor uh, were completely condemned. And what that consisted of was trash. Um, um, drug paraphernalia, um, human feces, everywhere. Uh, through 40,000 square feet of a three-story building, there was all of those things. And um, before we could move forward <laughs> doing anything, we had to get it out of condemned status. So that consisted of the entire team rolling up their sleeves, getting shovels, wearing masks, and piling trash out the windows and making sure it was secure and, you know, um, making sure, you know, fire was on board and, and the electric was shut off and, and the plumbing was shut off and um, how our poor tenants in the first floor were going to have heat. Like, let's talk about that for a moment because there was, there was no heat in the entire building. There was a boiler system from probably I don't know, 72 years ago that decided to work whenever it wanted. And um, our poor tenants on the first floor, you know, during some of the coldest days of the year had zero heat. Um, I don't know if any of them had hot water ever. Uh, so it was really safety and security first and foremost um, that our first floor tenants were taken care of and then, you know, cleaning out the trash and securing it so we didn't have squatters, so we didn't have people breaking in um, and damaging and hurting, you know, the building. So it took, it took a lot to get it out of condemned status, but it was worth it. It's, it's well on its way to, to being beautiful. It's very frustrating to have to see the time and the money and the effort that has gone into that when on the back end, you know, it, it, it very much could have been prevented. You know, that takes all of our team's time, that takes all of actual real money, um, and, and it sets us a whole year behind. You know, it, it took us a whole six months just to clean the building out. It took us a whole, you know, six months just to um, get it safe. So that was six months to a year, you know, that, that set us behind on, on everything. During the condemned status, you know, we had regular meetings with the city 
um, we had regular meetings with the fire department um, and it was all working together you know on how how we can move this project you know this huge project you know how we continue to to move it forward to get it out of condemned status so uh, we received a lot of direction from the city you know west odds and the fire chief as well as as far as like what steps we needed to take and what we needed to do Um, you know, in, in there towards the end when we got to pull those placards off and celebrate it being out of condemned status, you know, a lot of that does go back um, to the city and, you know, to the fire department and, and the police department as well. A fear of mine <laughs> for this project is that, um, you know, maybe the community won't fall in love with it like the way that I have fallen in love with it. You know, maybe... Um, Maybe people won't see it the way that I see it or the rest of our team see it, and maybe people won't appreciate the, the hard work that we've put into it, you know, that, that we have and take it for granted. Just a, just a peek behind the scenes for, you know, anyone to see the work that goes on within the whole entire team, like how much blood, sweat, and tears from each team member goes into each project is something that nobody ever talks about. Um, and nobody ever talks about, you know, like what it does to us personally, each, pro each project, or nobody talks about, you know, all of the negative things that people are saying and doing, you know, how it affects us as a team and as individuals. Um, so I do take, you know, the trash talk and the, the nasty things that people say, um, I take it to heart and I take it, you know, to offense for not only the work that we've done, but also the other team members that I know have put so much blood, sweat and tears and emotion into each project. Downtown Bell Fountain needs this project rehabbed, done, revitalized because this is the gem of the downtown. Like you see this building from every direction. This building has so much history and so many memories from so many people, I mean, personally and professionally, that inside of all of these walls here just holds like so much and the potential within these walls are so much. So like for our team specifically to be going through this project from start to finish and the things that we have found, I mean, we found a letter in a box in the attic from 1884, like, like September 24th, 1884. And in that box was this handwritten note just full of emotion and then there was like an American flag from that time as well. I mean, where else are you going to find that type of history? I mean, like, it's real tangible history that happened. So just from the history to, to of what it was to what it can be. I mean, it, this building is going to be here far, you know, after I'm gone. You know, my, my children are getting to like witness and experience um, this building as it is now, you know, and, and maybe one day like they'll be giving tours, you know, talking about the roof caving in while we're sitting here during this interview. Like who knows, you know, like, it's a, it's a real personal, intimate, like, pride of mine. <laughs>